All right, this is our interrupts part two, and we're going to make ourselves a little reaction time game. So once again, we're going to need a switch, which we put into the board across the Great Divide. One side of the switch goes to our interrupt pin, which is anybody, anybody, Bueller, Bueller, D2. The other side of the switch goes to anyone, Bueller, ground. And guys, that's it. Oops. That is our entire hookup for this program. One side of the switch plugged into D2, the other side plugged into ground. All right, let's head on over to the PC. All right, here's our code. So let's go over it. We're gonna start by declaring a variable of the type float. If you need to know what float is, um, you can go right here to help reference and find out all about it. Now, this is something new here. Volatile. What that means is when you're moving variables in and out of functions, you must declare them volatile. Otherwise, they can and probably will lose their values. This just tells the processor to be extra careful with it. That's really all it does. All right, next we're going to go down to our setup. We're going to start by turning on our serial comms. Then we're going to set digital pin 2, which as you remember from part 1 of our introduction to interrupts, and if you haven't watched it, there's a link in the description. Digital pin 2 is interrupt 0, and we're using the input pull-up to set that as a logic high. So that's going to be a 1 value. Pin mode 13 output. Remember most uh, Arduino, Unos, Nanos, whatever, have a built-in LED on pin 13, so you don't have to add anything. Next, we're going to give the player instructions. Press the button when you see the light. Okay, now here's another new one, random seed. Now, the reason you need this is because even though the random number generator is going to generate a random number every time, it's always going to start from the same place. So random seed, you're giving it a new place to start. And here's a good way to do it. An analog read of a pin with nothing attached to it. That means it's got a floating voltage. It could be 0.3 volts. It could be 4.9 volts. So it's going to be different all the time. So we're seeding a random value into the random uh, number generator. Once we have our random number seed, we will have a delay of a random period between 1,000 milliseconds and 5,000 milliseconds, one in five seconds. Then we are going to turn on the light. Then in the next clock cycle, we will set start time as millis. That is the number of milliseconds since the program began running. That's our start point. Then we will attach our interrupt, interrupt zero, bang, look for it on a low signal. Then we're going to come down here and declare our, inter our function, our interrupt function. There it is, bang. And then the first thing we're going to do is detach the interrupt. And that debounces it by simply not looking at it anymore. And then we're going to print bang because that's what we did in our intro and why the hell not. Next we are going to have another variable, another float type called end time. And it is going to check the millis where we are at the beginning of this. So the second you push the button, it's going to count the milliseconds till you get there. Now, here's a little caveat. Millis doesn't change within the function of the interrupt. So whatever it is when you call the interrupt, that's what it'll be when you exit the, the interrupt. So you can't use it within here, but you can look at it, and that's all we're doing. So our end time is the millis. 
then we're going to give our results. Your reaction time is, and I don't know why there's an extra colon in there. And then there's our little equation, end time minus start time gives us our elapsed time. And then we're going to do another print with a little space for prettiness in milliseconds. So our parts of our program, our setup function, our bang function, and here's our loop function. And as you can see, there's nothing to see here. Now, again, this is something different. This is what is called a one-shot. This program will run one time. If you want it to run again, you need to press the reset button. All right? Good. Let's try it out. I've got the board in my hand. Let's open up the serial window. Maybe. All right, there's a serial window. I'm going to restart the program. Waiting for the light. And I hit it. 182 milliseconds. Let's try again. 155 milliseconds. Try this program out. Let me know how you did in the comments below. And while you're there, why don't you give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends? And if you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for?